Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. This is a continuation of my series on Jesse Williams. He's an actor who won the BET Humanitarian Award. And as you all know, he gave a powerful speech about police brutality, racism, and cultural appropriation when he received his award. So in response to his powerful statement, there has been a lot of discussion online. There has been a lot of discussion in the news. And one of the people who discussed this brother's speech was Tommy Lauren of The Blaze. The Blaze is a conservative media website that Glenn Beck was a part of. Glenn Beck is a notorious, conservative, bigot, racist, narrow-minded person. He was one of the people who was instrumental in the blaze. So this woman, Tommy Lauren, is following in the footsteps of that guy, in the footsteps of ignorance, in the footsteps of racism and bigotry. And she did a response to Jesse Williams' statement. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that she mentioned, and I'm gonna to reply to each one of the points that she made. The first thing she said was this. She said that instead of it being a celebration of black entertainment, the BET Awards was an opportunity for people to complain about the plight of wealthy black actors and musicians. First of all, obviously, this brother Jesse Williams was not complaining about the plight of wealthy black people. The brother was complaining about the plight of black people in general and the plight of ordinary black people in particular. He talked about the killing of Tamir Rice. He talked about the killing of Eric Garner and other victims of police brutality. Those people are ordinary people. They're not wealthy, obviously. So this woman is exaggerating. The next thing that she said was that BET's idea of a humanitarian is someone who perpetuates a war on cops. This brother, Jesse Williams, never supported or encouraged violence against police. He never encouraged any kind of war against police. In fact, most, if not all, the advocacy groups, the progressives, the mainstream civil rights activists, none of them advocate violence against police. In fact, none of them have a bank blanket hatred against police. They don't. They're not waging any kind of war on police. They are fighting against police brutality. They are fighting against racial profiling. They're fighting against the harassment of black people. That's what they're fighting against, not just police in general. They're fighting against the institution of racism and white supremacy. That's what they're fighting against. And if there is a war being waged, that war is not on cops or police officers. It's a war that's being waged on black people. Every other day, there's a new black person killed by these police. Every other day. So obviously, we're not the ones waging war. The police are the ones waging war. And not only do these police kill our people, they get away with it regularly. Most of the time, they're not even indicted for killing black people. And when they are indicted, they are allowed to walk free. And the people are denied justice. So again, the war is not on cops. The war is on us, on black people. The next thing is this. This woman went on to talk about how many of the unarmed black men that are killed they're killed because they're reaching for the officer's gun 
or they're using other equipment to beat the police. And she went on to say that black men, you know, black people don't get a pass in these types of situations. When she made that statement, she was responding to a statement that Jesse Williams made when he talked about how Tamir Rice was killed in broad daylight by the police. And that afterwards, the police went and had a sandwich. That's the context in which this woman, Tommy Lauren, made her statement. As we know, anybody that knows anything about the Tamir Rice situation understands that the brother, first of all, is not even a black man. He wasn't a black man. He was a black boy, 12 years old, playing with a toy gun at a park. The police arrive on the scene, and within seconds of arriving on the scene, they shoot down that brother dead. They killed him without questioning, without assessing the situation. They just killed that brother. His life was snuffed out just like that. That brother didn't reach for any gun. That's not even in dispute. The police don't even make that kind of ridiculous assertion in the Tamir Rice situation. So what the hell is she talking about? Why did she bring this up? The other example that he, that uh, Jesse Williams talked about was Eric Garner, how that brother was choked live on camera in front of many people, choked to death by the police. The brother said over and over, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And the police were still on top of that brother, and that brother died. That brother wasn't reaching for any officer's gun. That brother wasn't reaching for a gun. When those police, for lack of a better word, killed that brother. So what is she talking about? You have countless examples of unarmed black men and boys and black women and girls being killed by these police. And they're not reaching for any weapon. They're just trying to survive. You had a situation of the brother Freddie Gray here in Baltimore. Put into a paddy wagon. He's obviously in some kind of physical distress when they pick him up and take him to the wagon. He's limping. Walking slowly. They put the brother in the wagon. Cuff him. They don't put a seatbelt on him. And the brother asks for medical attention at least twice. And at the end of the day, the brother's neck was shattered. And one of the medical examiners described his neck as feeling like a bag of rocks. That brother wasn't reaching for any kind of gun when he was killed. And there are countless examples of this. So there is no reason for this woman to bring up this situation about black men grabbing a gun or black men using some kind of equipment to beat an officer because that is not the case in any of the examples that the brother Jesse Williams cited in his speech. That's not even a question raised in those cases. In the case of Tamir Rice and Eric Garner. The police don't even make that argument. The next thing she talked about was this. She talked about how Jesse Williams was demanding equal rights, but she went on to say, and I'm talking about uh, Tommy Lauren, she went on to say, what rights don't black people have? She was basically saying that we have equal rights and so there's nothing to complain about, essentially. That's what her argument is if you boil it down to its bare essence. The fact of the matter is you can have all the rights in the world written on paper. You can have all the cases in the case books. But that doesn't mean anything 
as long as police continue to kill our people and get away with it regularly. You can't talk to us about some equal rights when black people are disproportionately targeted by the police. As I mentioned in one of the other videos that I did, according to the Washington Post, and I'm going to post the link in the description box and I'll post it in the other video as well. But according to the Washington Post, police killed blacks three times the rate of whites. Black men account for 6% of the U.S. population, but they are 40% of those who were killed while unarmed by the police. Don't lecture me about equal rights. Don't lecture any black person about how we have equal rights in this country as long as we have horrific statistics like that. As long as we have the Tamir Rices and the Trayvon Martins and the Eric Gardner's and all the other countless victims like Jonathan Farrell, Sean Bell, Oscar Grant, and the list goes on and on. As long as those examples exist for us, don't lecture us about how we have equal rights in this country because we don't in all actuality. In practice, we don't. This woman went on to talk about how Jesse Williams said that people need to have a record of critique of oppression. And really, he wasn't even addressing, from what I understand, he wasn't addressing uh, necessarily white people. I thought he was really placing the onus on a lot of these black celebrities who want to criticize groups like Black Lives Matter, who want to criticize people who are actually doing work in the streets against police brutality. But yet those same people don't have anything to say about police brutality. They don't have anything to say about racism and poverty and all the other conditions that afflict many poor black communities. That's what the brother was talking about. He wasn't necessarily talking about white people not having a, a record of critiquing oppression. But most white people don't have a record of critiquing oppression. This woman went on to talk about the Civil War basically saying that we should be so happy that these white people way back over 100 years ago fought to end slavery. And that that alone should absolve white people of any kind of guilt or any kind of responsibility for current things that are happening right now. What the hell does the Civil War have to do with what's happening right now? the racism and the oppression that we continue to face right this minute. Don't tell me what white people did over a hundred and something years ago. Talk about what they're doing today. Talk about that. I tell you, it's, it's just, um, you know, absurd that this woman would raise that. Talk about the Civil War. That civil war didn't absolve white people when you still have racism today. It doesn't didn't absolve white people when you had racism and slavery for hundreds of years. One war doesn't absolve that crime against humanity. It doesn't absolve those white people who enslaved our ancestors. It doesn't absolve them. It doesn't absolve them because they were enriched off of our free labor. And they continue to prosper off of that ill-gotten, unjust enrichment. And even after the Civil War, after Reconstruction, the federal government abandoned black people as they had always done, abandoned black people and left us to be terrorized by the KKK, left us to be subjected to the black codes and Jim Crow for decades. 
So don't lecture us about what these so-called good white people have done for us. When the overwhelming majority have remained silent and they allowed the injustice to continue. And that's what this brother is talking about when he talks about cultural appropriation. These people want to dress like the black man. They want to talk like black people. They want to use the same slang as black people. But when black people are killed in these streets by these police and by these white vigilantes, you don't see those same white people marching in the streets for justice for black people. They are nowhere to be found. They are missing in action. That's what the brother is talking about. Also, this woman went on to talk about how she has no need to apologize for her whiteness. Well, that's not what the brother was asking anybody to do. He wasn't asking these people to apologize for being white. He was speaking out against oppression. He was speaking out against white supremacy. When he was talking about the concept of whiteness, he was talking about the concept that there's a special race of people who deserve privilege, who are somehow superior to all other races. That was the idea. That was the concept that the brother was attacking. And then this woman went on to talk about how it's not white people dividing America. It's you talking about Jesse Williams saying that he's the one dividing America. People like him. When black people speak out against racism, we are accused of being divisive and we are accused of being racist. They do this in order to silence us, as I said in the last video. They do this in order to make themselves feel better, to make themselves feel as if they have no responsibility for the conditions, for the oppression. A speech didn't divide America. A speech didn't create any kind of hostility. What divided the community, what divides the people from the police is the brutality that the people have to endure is the cases like Trayvon Martin, the cases like Michael Brown, the cases like Tamir Rice, the cases like Oscar Grant, the cases like Amadou Diallo, Sean Bell, and all the other countless black people killed by these polices, police officers, the cases like Rakia Boyd. That was another case he cited. Those cases where black people get killed and there is no justice. That creates division. When black people are followed and harassed and searched by these police, that creates the division. Not somebody giving a speech, speaking out against the division, speaking out against the racism. This woman finally went on to say that Jesse Williams is teaching people to feel sorry for themselves, teaching black people to feel sorry for themselves. He's not teaching black people to feel sorry for themselves. He's encouraging people to stand up, to stand up against injustice, to stand up against racism, to stand up against inequality. That's what the brother is encouraging people to do. That is what he is teaching the youth to do by his example. He's teaching people to stand up. He's teaching people to speak truth to power. And for that, I respect him. For that, I salute him. And I'll just conclude by mentioning one other point that this woman told me Lauren raised, and she said that it sounds like Jesse Williams prefers special treatment. That brother doesn't prefer any kind of special treatment. It is not special treatment for black people not to be killed unjustly by these police. It is not special treatment to expect the courts to enforce the law. It is not special treatment to expect people not to appropriate our culture while they disrespect us. That's not special treatment. That's equal treatment. That's dignity. That's respect. 
So those are my thoughts. Tell me what you think about this whole situation. Tell me what you think about Tommy Lauren's statements. So please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.